Greetings. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host, and this is Community Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an outstanding program tonight. We're going to be talking about mentoring in music. Uh, we have with us uh, Mr. David Jones. Uh, he's the founder of Pump Hard Productions and Real Records. Uh, he is currently involved in youth mentoring uh, and music training programs locally. David Jones is the founder of Pump Hard Productions and Real Records. Uh, he has been doing music for over 42 years and playing professionally for over 37 years. He has been working with youth and music for 35 years. He has five songs recorded by major record labels. He has worked with artists such as Melba Moore, and Marvin Yancey. He was the music director of Delion Richards uh, for several years, including her Grammy nominated uh, years. Uh, he has toured with the Mighty Klaus of Joy doing one of their anniversary tours. He has done studio work for Word Records, the largest gospel and Christian label in the world. After touring for almost 15 years, he settled down and worked with local artists such as Lou Pride and the Lou Pride Revenue and the Luckett Brothers of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He is currently involved in youth mentoring and music training programs locally. He is a member of Robo Rehoboth. Church of uh, God in Christ in Waukegan, Illinois, and he is currently the organist for St. John Missionary Baptist Church for uh, the pastor Jimmy Johnson yes, sir. and uh, God's Temple Outreach Church of God in Christ. He also serves as chaplain for Mary's Mission since being called to the ministry. Greetings, uh, uh, Minister Jones. Yes, You're in the ministry also, right, in addition to music. When did you uh, uh, get involved in ministry? Well, uh, I was called to ministry Okay. probably several years ago. I accepted my calling recently in the last five, six years. Um, commitment level went up. Mm -hmm. And since then I've been able to do some things like be the chaplain at Mary's Mission it's a transitional living facility mm -hmm. uh, for people that are trying to do better for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, music? Uh, when did you get involved? I know you're from a music family. You know? But when did you officially get involved in music? Uh, story, my mom and dad told me about, I was seven years old on my seventh birthday. Mm -hmm. That was the Latin part of May. I asked them for a piano okay. every day from my birthday until Christmas. And they bought me a piano for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And it came with a piano teacher. I didn't ask for that. I know a seven-year-old's not asking for no piano teacher. <laughs> okay. But her name was Mary Emma Dean Smith. Mm -hmm. And she was an elderly lady, and she used to catch the bus. I'll never forget it. She was about 80, I'd say 85, something like that, when I started taking lessons from her. Mm -hmm strong woman and she gave me lessons for five years in doing doing classical work and i remember after i stopped taking lessons from her she lived another 10 years to torment other children <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but she was a joy and now you know i look back on those days and she helped to mold my life mm -hmm. you know and that's how I got started in music. I was seven when I started. I took classical music for five years. Mm -hmm. And I got my first paying job at age 11. Mm -hmm. I know music is, uh, is, can really shape uh, youth lives. I know you're doing mentoring in music with the youngsters that you have on the program tonight. But I have three youngsters, and they all three started in music. As a matter of fact, uh, my youngest daughter is over 50 now, and she's a uh, uh, choir director mm -hmm. at church. And uh, my son, uh, Waddell Brooks Jr., is uh, a music director at uh, 
Well, it's it's uh, Antioch, Antioch, yes. Antioch uh, uh -huh. Baptist Church, mm -hmm. and uh, my oldest daughter plays uh, Yolanda. She plays oboe. She plays drums and and so forth for a uh, uh, Christian Valley Missionary Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Now they do that. They start off as a youngster, like the youngsters that you have here, but music is not a career for them. Mm -hmm. But it does a lot for the soul. Amen. And, and, and they are touching the lives of others. But tell us about the youth that you have. Uh, well, you may tell us, how did you get involved with mentoring of youth? I am a preacher's son. Okay. Uh, I grew up in strict environment. And when I was young, I could kind of be considered a little freak of nature. I was six foot tall when I was 11. Wow. But I only weighed 90 pounds. So <laughs> it was a kind of a, you know, give and take. And that, through that, God has a way. He has a plan for everybody's life. Always. I had a tailor. My suits were all tailor made. My mm -hmm. godmother was a seamstress. Mm -hmm. And so I had access to looking the part of an older person. Like I said, I was six foot tall. And by that time, I had got sort of proficient in music mm -hmm. and my parents being who they were they didn't hinder me in any way my father was a what they call quote unquote holiness minister okay but he uh allowed me to play for the music department the children's youth department at first corinthian that oh. was the first paying job that i got and that was over 42 years ago wow and from there i i would be playing with the youth then and a little later on in life, uh, I got the chance to get together with a young lady named Delion Richards. Okay. Now, she's an adult now, but at the time she was three years old when she had started, her parents had started her into singing. Mm -hmm. So I was giving her piano lessons and we were singing locally at churches and things. And one thing led to another and we did a performance at a Pastor Hinton's church. He's going on to be with the Lord now, but okay. Richard Hinton. And at that church, there was a man there named Ben Bess, Dr. Ben Bess. He was a saxophone player. And he was in charge of the very first Chicago Gospel Fest. Mm -hmm. It was called the Mayor Jane Gospel Fest at that time. Mm -hmm. And he saw us perform at Pastor Hinton's church. And he jumped up without thinking about it because the crowd really responded to what was going on with us because all of us were just little children uh myself my younger brother was playing the drums there was a guy named michael taylor some of you might know him oh, yeah. uh he's uh the music director for ricky dillard okay and he was playing with us and uh, mike Wynn. it was just pe young musicians from around the community none of us were over 13 or 14. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the crowd really responded to us. And he jumped up and said, if you want to see this young lady again, she's going to be on the Chicago Gospel Festival. Mm. Now, what did he say that for? Once he did that, he had put his, his word out. Yeah. So Delion's mother, being the go-getter that she is, she had about 20, 30 of us, all the choir members, the youth choir members and stuff, we were calling that place day and evening, day and night. Mm -hmm. I heard the little girl's gonna be on there. Is it true? And we wanna get tickets. Now we gave them about a thousand, two thousand calls. Okay. Because at first he wouldn't respond to her anymore. He said, Well, I just made a mistake. I'm not gonna do this. Mm -hmm. But after such pressure, they put us on the Chicago Gospel Festival, the very first one that they had. Mm -hmm. And like I say, God has a plan for everybody's life. The program was supposed to feature a certain group. Uh, it was Milton Bronson and the Thompson Community Singers because they had been in singing for 30 years. And it did feature them. But they stuck us up at the, uh, to them, the, the least opportune moment where we would just get a spot, you know, be there and gone so he'd mm -hmm. keep his word. But what they did is they put us up right at 9 o'clock and we mm. got national news. CBS, NBC, ABC, and the local Channel 9 caught us on tape. And the Lord just allowed our performance to raise the roof. And from that, that gave us a chance to do things on a wider scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, we started doing 
workshops for youth. And that's how I got involved with doing, dealing with the youth and the, trying to mentor the youth in music. And through trial and error and the, the things that I had learned, you get better over the years at doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, God has a plan for everyone's life. Yes, sir. And he has a plan for the youngsters that you have here tonight. And I could mention one person is in the pay front page of the newspaper yesterday, Lee England Jr. Violinist. Now, Violinist, yeah, yes. and he was, uh, he started out at Tyson Tyler's daycare center, you know, and mama, his mo mother had no idea that he would be a violinist. As a matter of fact, he was encouraged, just like you're encouraging the youngsters now, he was encouraged by a school teacher mm -hmm. that he had that supplied the violins and the books and so forth for him to play, and now he is a world-renowned violinist. Yes. As a matter of fact, he planned to do some work here at the Genesee Theater in Waukegan, Illinois now. So you never know, um, you know, when you're at a young age, what's going to go on? What's, what, what do you develop in a later life? Okay. It, it may be professionally or it may be for, you know, your own, own use, you know. Or to just help in the community, your local church or right, right, something right. of that nature. Uh, well, tell us about the. I uh, have with me here. right now. Uh, Four of the piano students, well, four, all four are piano students, but one is a piano, drums, and guitar student. Okay. And we're starting with the youngest to the oldest. Okay. Uh, and the reason I had uh, the older gentleman come and do work with us is because he started taking his lessons well into his age, you mm -hmm. know, well into his life. Mm -hmm. And God has blessed his ability to whereas now soon he'll be playing for a church on a on a permanent basis. He's doing it now. Just he's getting his feet wet. Okay. But uh, that just lets everybody know he's never too late. Right, right. You know, music is for everybody, and it's a key to the soul. You can play the right melody, and you can open people up, and you can feed them what you want them to have. Pref hopefully, it'll be the word of God. But. Right, right. We all know that music is used to feed our young people things. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I try to do with my mentoring program is to teach the young people it's more to life. It's more to music than just having saggy pants and cursing. Okay. You know, right, right. it's way, it's more deeper than that. And the part that a lot of them don't really realize is most of those rap artists and s singers and stuff, mm -hmm. they're educated. Okay. Right. That most of them have backgrounds in English, in communication. But, you know, if you're looking from the outside in, all you see is the glamour in the video. Mm -hmm. But music, the music business is just what I said. It's a business. Mm -hmm. There are many people that make fortunes in music without ever being famous. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, you can use it as more than just uh, a hobby. It, basically, it's a form of discipline because they have to practice. Mm -hmm. And I have, I brought some of the, uh, my best with me. Uh, the young man, Donald McCorley, God has blessed him with the ability to read very well. He reads proficiently. Wow. Okay. He's eight years old. My uh, next student is Brian Bennett. Brian is doing th multiple instruments. And he's trying to trying his hand at singing a little bit yet. I don't know if he's ready to try to sing in front of anybody, mm -hmm. but he has done some singing too. And Isaiah is a singer also, mm -hmm. and he's a piano player. And Isaiah has started playing for a church, and that's it, it can be you know more than just a hobby. Mm -hmm. It can be for myself. It's it's a, a form of sustaining me. Okay. It's my income. Uh, it depends on how do you want to utilize it. It just depends on where you, how far you're willing to take it. I want to let you hear some of the things that they're doing. I want to start off with Brian, the guitar player. Okay. And I'm going to accompany him doing a song uh, that was made famous by Hank Williams. Hold on, man. Give me my hand. Okay, I got it. Okay, Brian, are you ready? <laughs>
Brian Bennett. Oh, that now, how long has Brian, Brian been playing, practicing? He's been doing the guitar the longest, and that's been less than a year, maybe a year at the most. Fantastic. At the most. And he's, uh, his reading level is kept picking up. Uh, as I say, it's a, it's a mentoring tool because it can teach young, young boys, and I deal with a few young girls with, with the help of my wife, uh, discipline and teach him what real life is about because when he started, he couldn't play at all, of course. When, it, when you start, that's just like when children are born, they don't speak English. <laughs> okay. But through a little hard work, ain't that right, Brian? <laughs> a little hard work and some ups and downs. Now his confidence level, you see his confidence level, he's eight years old, he's performing in front of the camera and the lights. Yeah, he's learning uh, work ethic uh, right, right along at, at an early age now, sir. Yes, sir, and I'm very proud of him. Okay. Uh, the next up we have is you know what? Let's allow uh, Brian to play some piano music for us. Okay. All right. Move this out of the way. All right, here we go. Brian's going to perform for us a song called Swan Lake. Play a beat for us. <laughs> so you have a multiple, multiple uh, instruments that they play, and not just one instrument. Yes, sir. I try to get uh, the the youth to do more than just one thing. Okay. Actually, I'm trying to teach him how to work computers too to do his own recording. I'm teaching the program slowly but surely. Wow. Uh, some of the children's parents uh, have them come to me, and if they come to my home, they have access to a state-of-the-art studio also beginner studios where they can practice using the equipment and I don't mind if they break it you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that way uh, they can develop their skills and start seeing what they can accomplish Brian's done a video in the studio and he's also done like three songs so far on, on that we put down on CD mm -hmm. so he can take it to his family and it motivates them to do more mm -hmm. and that's the good thing about it I mean it it gives him a they give the children a feeling of self-worth. That brings me to my next young man. Donald, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Donald McCorley. Come on, Donald. Have a seat on the piano. Donald McCorley is especially gifted. He reads music well. Mm -hmm. With, you know, when you begin to, uh, with reading, it's sort of like reading just words, but a little more difficult. Mm -hmm. But it's a discipline. You have okay. to practice doing this. Start on G. Okay, what are you going to play for us then? <laughs> has another song that he's working on and he wants to play it. Okay. Starting the key of G.
now. All right, very Donald good. Donald was eight years old. Okay. And at the, at the wow. rate that he's going, I'll give him a couple more years, and we're going to have to find him a church to play for, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Donald. <laughs> okay, the next, next person that is coming up, these are all children right now, and, and this next one I have a special love for. His name is Isaiah. Mm -hmm. uh, Isaiah, McCoy, Isaiah McCoy. Isaiah uh, from a single family home, and his mother's doing the best that she can. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it takes a village to raise a family. Okay. And I got a love for Isaiah. I call him son all the time. Come on, son. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and I try to treat him as if he is my son. And not just him, all of, all of the, the, pe the young men that I mentor, I deal with a couple that are older and, mm -hmm. oh, it's more than a notion. But it, with love and kindness, the scriptures say, have I drawn thee? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Isaiah, give us something special. Isaiah is, it plays for a church. So what we're going to allow him to do is just play some praise and worship tunes. I'm most proud of him. He sounds like uh, more advanced than us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He, he gets to uh, pray for a church. Is, yes, sir. God mm -hmm. has blessed him to be able to play every other Sunday at a ministry, uh, at a full-blown ministry. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> there, a, a friend of mine, his name is Pastor Mark McCauley. He okay. gave me the opportunity to, to, to do this because I, we have so similar visions. He sees more than just himself, and I mm -hmm. see more than just myself. Uh, as long as these young people live, I'll never die. Tell me this, though. It seems like uh, <clears throat> they are self-motivated. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't take a, um, a, uh, a lot of motivation for them. They're self-motivated. And, and that's, uh, it, now you can be, um, receive the credits for the one that has one parent home. Yes, sir. Now, I would say this to them. There's nothing wrong with being from a one family home because I was oh. raised from one family home, right? Mm -hmm. My father left my home when I was two years old. Mm -hmm. And here I'm 83 now, <laughs> you know, Bless and I have my own radio show, I have my own television show, and I wasn't trained, though, at a, at a uh, studio like you have here. Mm -hmm. This is a God given talent that I have, 
And that's the reason I like to, you say they are raising a church. Yes. You know, and uh, God is the answer. So I would uh, stay motivated in the church, let, be led by God, and the sky is the, 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 sky the, is the limit. limit yeah. Yes. This last young, uh, young, man, young, man. That, <laughs> young man that I'm going to have do a song for us, his name is Clayton Jones. Okay. Uh, Clayton came to me, I think he was, I think he said 62. Mm. And Clayton has been taking lessons for a little over a year. He had to stop due to a health concern for a while, but now he's back. Mm -hmm. And uh, the <clears throat> his church had no musician. Okay. So I started working with him on just learn this song. I just learned this song. Mm -hmm. And you get a couple of this song and this songs together, now you know three or four songs. Okay. So he gets him four or five songs together. And so I kept trying to urge him, man, you need to go and do it. You should just tell him they don't have it. anything beats nothing. Mm -hmm. you know, and he's like, no, I'm not ready. And so he took a chance and played for, was it the altar call or for the offertorial part of a service? Okay. And it, and it got his, you know, it broke the ice. And now he's doing a little more and a little more. I'm trying to push him to the point where, man, handle the worship experience. That's why God's given you the ability. Yes, sir. Uh, Clayton, let's see what you can do there. <laughs> Actually, this is my first time playing in public. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, All right. The church is public. <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, I might say that Community Forum can be proud to say that your first time playing in public was on Community Forum. So we, <laughs> I guess he doesn't consider church public. <laughs> uh, that, that was a blessing, Brother Clayton. Thank you. I want to thank you all for coming and letting everyone in the world see your talent. Brian, you're on your way. Donna, what can I say about you? You're gifted, son. You know God is on your side. Um, now, now, what about you? Are you going to give us a... Uh, <laughs> I will, I will if, if time permits, but I really yeah. want to talk to you about... I really want to talk to you about the mentoring aspect okay. of, of, of what I'm doing. Uh, I've been put in a position now... I, I wanted to open a music school, and okay. due to... You know, financials, there's more to it than just wanting to do something. It takes backing. It takes, you know, funding, okay. uh, material and things. I wasn't able to get it done at the time that I had the vision. But okay. the vision never died. Mm -hmm. So I started building a lot of the things and getting to more of the things that I was going to need for the school. And I built, uh, had my basement remodeled, and I've been utilizing uh, the lower level of my home for this for a while. Mm -hmm. But now the Lord has opened up a door, and I've got some backing now. Mm -hmm. I've got some other people that have seen the vision, and through the music and mentoring program, we're now starting to branch out. We're, the next place that we're going to be uh, utilizing what God has given us is in a building that we all know and love in Waukegan as the Towers. That's what they uh, call it. In, well, you know, okay, right. But it's actually an apartment complex, but there's a lot of residents there and a lot of children. Mm -hmm. I have some people that have donated the computers already. Mm. I have a young man that's going to do the programming. Okay. Uh, his name is Devarius. He's a very good musician in the community. Oh, yes. And he's going to help me out in this endeavor. And we're going to teach these young people how to 
to record music with the rec with the computers and how to do their own productions. And we're going to, at the same time, try to teach them that it's more to it than just a notion. Mm -hmm. Teach them some work ethic. I'm also going to be giving them piano lessons if they choose to have them, singing lessons. Uh, I teach guitar, as you can see, uh, okay. the bass, the drums. And I'm pretty proud of my vocal teachings. Mm -hmm. But that gives them a whole vast area of things that they can do beside just be outside watching older kids that sometime aren't the best role models nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, I really want to do something for our community. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at my age, it's time, if not now, when? You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So that's where I am with, with the youth and music and mentoring program. Uh, if we have time left, I'll play you a song or something. Yeah, we, we like for you to do that. Uh, the people, well, most people in Lake County know David Jones. You played so many events yes, sir. and so with so many organizations. But now, now, do you have, um, I think you have an overall plan uh, that you would like to use? Because if you go for funding, mm -hmm. you know, the first thing they're going to ask you about a plan. Yes, do you sir. Have an overall plan. Yes, sir, I do. Uh, I would like to have a school filled with adequate teachers beside myself okay. that can do this, uh, that can do the training and the teaching. My wife uh, has a degree in dealing with people, okay. and I want her to use her skills and get others from her uh, field that can do maybe some of the psychological help that might be inv needed in, and involved with the youth mentoring and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you really don't want to just try to put all the children in the same basket because every child has its own needs. Mm -hmm. I do have a plan as far as community help, church help, that type of thing, but I didn't want to put myself in a position where I had to be government regulated and ended up in a situation where okay. Illinois has no money this year, so they stopped the program on my children. Okay. Once I start, I want to be able to continue what I'm doing, so that's re the reason that I'm going with my personal savings and stuff, mm -hmm. and hoping that other uh, people will catch this same vision, churches, but anything that I do or anything that anybody else helps to, do, to make this work, it's just gonna be a, an endeavor and a labor of love. We're gonna try our best to be self-sufficient. This is fantastic. Uh, uh, you mentioned Delion Richards, uh, too, yes, right? Um, she's world-renowned. Yes, sir. In, uh, have you contacted her by coming down and sponsoring an event for you? You know, I talked to her yesterday. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> I, I, I did, you know what? That's a good idea, Mr. Brooks. That's a very good idea. I didn't well, think of that. Well, that's family, you know. Yes, and I, I spoke to her on yesterday, and uh, she did a, a North Chicago event out here maybe a couple of years ago. Okay. Uh, North Chicago Day or something mm -hmm. for that city. Oh, uh, uh, community, community, community Day. Community that's Day. That's it. Yeah, yeah that, Community right. Day. So I'm sure she'd be willing to come out here and do something of that nature. Uh, she still has roots here. Some of her family is here. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's a good idea. You know, I spoke about motivation but uh, uh, to the youngsters uh, mm -hmm. there, but you're highly motivated, so you, yes, you have to succeed. And to, so. be, to be successful in anything, uh, any, any, um, you, know, uh, you have to be more highly motivated. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, there is yeah. one other thing. I, I found that no matter what you do, and you, it's a very delicate area nowadays trying to teach children about God. And myself, I'm a Christian, so I would say okay. teach them about Christianity. But there's a way that you can sh let your light shine, and you can let your life be an open epistle where you can minister without having to shove the Bible down someone's throat. If okay. they see you're different and they see that the blessings of God are on your life, they might not know that's what it is, mm -hmm. but they'll see everything he touches, something good goes oh, okay. with it. Okay. And, you know, people as such as myself and you, Christian people, we know what it is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the world needs a light. They need a light. Right. Right. Um, how important is uh, parental involvement? I, I know tonight you have uh, uh, several parents are here. Yes. But how, how important, important is parental environment in the success of uh, the it, kids? It, it, it's, it's the backbone of what the child is going to be is, or okay. what the child will become. If we can get parents to be involved 
it would make such a difference if we could just get them to just say, you're doing a good job. Okay. Or to keep them to practice, mm -hmm. you know, keep them practicing and keep them no, on top of what they should do. There's no limit to where they can go. Mm -hmm. yes. oh, well, how, how do you, uh, you recruit uh, uh, for participants for your okay. program? Okay, we're going through the uh, apartment complex, the towers, and that's a central location in Waukegan. But a lot of my recruitment, like some of the first young people I work with, I met them through local churches. Okay. And they would come to my home, and we would teach them different things, and we would try to steer them in the right direction and try to talk to them and not at them because the first group that I dealt with were teens, and they were almost, uh, they were men-child. You know, mm -hmm. they weren't men, but they weren't childs anymore, okay. children anymore. Okay. So I had to deal with them on that level. And, you know, you win some, and I won't say you lose some, but some turn out better than others. Mm -hmm. And you, you can't give up the, the struggle. If you can help somebody as you pass this way, your living is not That'd in vain. Be in vain. Yes, yeah. sir. There are certain elements. Um, we all have different talents, and everyone not going to be musicians. So what are some, some elements that you're looking for for a person to be a good musician? You, uh, there's a thing called perfect pitch, and this you're born with. Okay. And it's the ability to recognize a note. If you hear the note, you can mimic the note. Or if somebody, if somebody wants the note called back up, your mind can pull that particular note back up. Mm. You're born with that ability, mm. but not every child is born with it. There's a thing called the propensity to be a musician. And some children aren't born with that, just as some children are born with the ability to be great athletes. Mm -hmm. Some children are just not going to be musicians. But all children can learn more than they know. Okay. You know, all children can learn more than they know. So maybe I can't be the greatest singer. Let me, let me leave singing out because singing is a, a, a separate thing. The vocal cord can be taught. Now, anybody can be a good singer. Okay. Anybody might not be born with a great voice, but anyone can be taught to sing. Mm -hmm. But some people just don't have the ability to catch the music in. So if they're in that environment and they love it, I'm teaching how to work with computers. I'm teaching people oh, skills. Okay. Okay. Music only, doesn't <clears throat> only involve the instrument. It involves the management. Okay. You know, it involves other trainers. If you, that's a, I teach singing vocal lessons, but you wouldn't know it to hear me sing. I know how to sing. Mm -hmm. I wasn't born with a good voice. <laughs> okay. You know, it's, a, it's a big difference. I know how to stay on note and I know where I should be, but where I should be does not sound good to me. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so there's many other facets of music beside literally the hands-on part of it. Mm -hmm. you, like I said, there's the, the music business is just what I said, sir. It's a business. But and uh, it has... It's changing. It's in a state of flux, too, right? Uh, the, the, the way music was when you started probably is a lot different now. It's, uh... <laughs> Which is a plus for the young people. Okay. Because now, with the advent of the computer music, mm -hmm. almost anybody can be a professional producer, engineer, that type of thing. It's literally turned into a computer-driven yeah. industry. industry, whereas before it was talent-driven. Now it's creativity driven. If you've got the right creative instincts and you make the right creative move, you can make this, just this particular unit right here itself. Uh, it plays, I can have it play the bass, the piano, the drums, horns. Wow. It does everything but sing for you. Okay. And it has a, a function that you can plug in a mic and it's called a vocorder. And basically it gives you a different voice than your true voice. Mm. And on key, because <laughs> right, right. so now where we've come to the place now is people without talent can do music. If mm -hmm. your love for it is there, and your your drive and your work ethic, cause see that's what I teach them. It's a work. Ethic. Music is a discipline. Mm -hmm. The same way that you won't get good grades in school if you don't study, you will not get good at that instrument if you don't practice. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the uh, industry field itself? I noticed you had all men here. Uh, <laughs> you have um, more men in the field than women, or is it? Uh... 
uh, open to uh, women it's, also. It's open just as much as to women. I, I noticed that a lot of times the, the female students that I have, they don't see as many of other girls involved. Yeah. So they're kind of bashful and shy back from it. But I'm trying to change that now. So, so what we're going to be doing with this new program here at, at the Waukegan uh, High Rise is we're going to be having them separate. We're going to be having girls do one thing, and then we're going to have boys do one thing, but they're literally going to be doing the same things. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to put them together. Mm -hmm. We're going to let them grow with their own for a minute. Then we're going to start mixing them together, which you're going to teach social skills for one. You've got to learn how to deal with women the same as you have to learn how to deal with men, mm -hmm. boys as well as with girls. And we're going to be, you know, doing a lot of things. Uh, we're going to be teaching morals, but not so much teaching them as living and practicing them. Mm -hmm. So they can learn through sight. They can learn through being uh, guided in that direction. You know, there's certain, we're going to have a certain standard that we set. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to go below it for nothing or nobody because your child wants to be tantrum bound or whatever. No, there's going to be a certain standard that has going to be expected of the children. But if the parents are willing to come and be a part of it, you know, children have a tendency not to clown as much when their parents are there. Yeah. Right. You know, right. uh, but you know, when the, uh, the, the scripture said a child left to itself would bring you to shame, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so we really need the parents' help in these endeavors. And we, we're going to do it with or without their help, but we would love to have their help. I know school districts, for example, <clears throat> uh, with the budget cuts, the first thing they cut is uh, music. The music. <laughs> the first thing they cut music was music. Music and, and athletics. Uh, and I wonder, music is so important. And, it's cultural. Uh, uh, we have, um, like for the, uh, I think the local high school, North Chicago High School, that my kids went through, mm -hmm. one of the top music departments uh, in the, in the, in the district. Well, you know? Really in the state. It's in the state, okay. Mm -hmm. Robert Presley I was the last to retire, mm -hmm. and I think they're reducing that um, uh, music department, you know, real, real low, you know. Uh, when you take away the music, uh, Stevie Wonder had an album out in the 70s called Songs Out the Key of songs in the key of life okay music is an intricate part of life if 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 the average person would just take a look and see how involved music is intertwined with their life mm -hmm. every time you watch a movie every time you watch a television series every time you watch your little favorite program what do you hear you hear music okay there's music being played mm -hmm. in every television wait a minute let's go further yes, every sir. commercial you listen okay. to okay. there's music Every time you hear uh, the radio on, even if it's not a song per se, if it's an advertisement, music is intricately in, interweaving in, into our society. Mm -hmm. And for, the, for music to be taken out of our schools, it's literally stealing away opportunities mm -hmm. from our youth. Mm -hmm. I know there are many, uh, probably hundreds of uh, uh, kids that have graduated have done well, but I... I can name a few that everyone would know. Uh, John Gary, I don't know whether you um, heard him or not, but John Gary yes, is uh, the great saxophonist, and he's world known, known now. He's he, he out works of, with uh, the Whispers. Okay, yes, uh, out, of, out, of, heard, out of California now. Mm -hmm. He's uh, and also another one, Jeffrey Sparks. Yes, he's out uh, of Atlanta. Out of Atlanta, uh, great. Now suppose that. Uh, well, I can go on and on, and I, I guess, and I, I, I mentioned about my my three that that were done, and there are more that in this community that have done it. Um, right. um, what is his name? What's the mayor? Rockingham? There, there's a. Oh yeah, Greg. Greg Rockingham, Greg Rockingham used to play yeah. with Guy Lombardo. Oh, okay. I'm going to play you a little something here. We seem to be <laughs> running out of time, so I guess I'll play you a song or something. Yeah, we don't we want to run out of time without your um, your talent there. Oh, <laughs> now I grew up learning classical music. And that's what I love. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, one song in particular because I, I got a whooping, a whipping from my parents for not getting it right. Okay. Now, that might seem harsh, but now this, is, this makes a living for me. Okay. I needed that. Okay. It goes like this. And I remember this song. Okay, uh, we've done things of our own. I, I love jazz, and like I say, I was 
raised up in classical music and church music, but a combination of the two. That's uh, my, my personal favorite, is to put that classical training I have with a, a music that you can feel. And my church background. about the uh, great renowned uh, uh, singer, I guess, Ray Charles, I guess. And now, the, everybody want to know, how can he be such a great artist? And not have sight. Yeah, right. <coughs> that's, that's a good question. That's the same thing I have to do with my piano students and my guitar students. I put the book under their chin okay. where they can't see the keys. Okay. Because once you've touched this, this piano, these keys aren't going to move. They're going to be in the same spot they were in the last time you reached and touched them. Okay. Um, let's see here. Mm, find it. They're not moving. So you really don't have to be able to look at them. They're going to be there. And that's how Ray Charles and Steve... Uh, Stevie Wonder and others that are blind are able to do this because it, it's a it's muscle memory. It's almost like how Curry makes the basket from no matter where and he keeps shooting it Amazing. because he's just practiced it over and over. And it's the same thing with the music. The more you do this, the easier it becomes. When a pian when you start out on piano lessons, it seemed like a big instrument, but mm -hmm. actually the piano is only a 12 note instrument. After you reach the 12th note it starts over again. Mm. So you just go in the music alphabet is only from A to G. You have flats and sharps, so that gives you 12 notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then you have five flats or five sharps. Other than that, it's the same thing over. See how they have the same tone, just at a higher level? It's the same note. So a whole piano is only 12 notes. So the more you do it, the more it starts to become part of you. So it's not like, now, I don't play notes anymore. I play feelings. I, mm. I play the, the emotions, what I'm feeling, how I'm feeling. Uh, sometime in a church service, there might be some minister putting his thing, you know, giving his word, and I'm following where he's going. And he might go, uh -huh. See, and you feel it. Okay. And it's going to be in the same place every time. It's not losable. And that's how I do that. Amazing, no. You know, we just left uh, African American History Month in the month of uh, February, but the greatest composer of all times, Ludwig von Beethoven, yes. just happened to be uh, African American. Well, he was a, a German Spanish African. Moor, yeah. you know, with dark skin. And it, it just runs in the. Um, oh, and our genes. Our genes. Oh, uh, you know, we're blessed. It, it's you know, amazing. a lot of times uh, we, we, we short stop ourselves. Mm -hmm. But we as a people, and there's nothing that we can't do. We rise at everything we touch, at education, at medicine, at music, at the fine arts, okay, at crime, at violence. Okay. Everything oh, we oh, touch, oh, we oh, rise oh, at right, it. Right, right. When they brought us to this country, the weak died on right. the way. All right. There's nothing that your child, there's nothing that your daughter, your son cannot do because we are strong. Mm -hmm. We have, God has given us that extra something. You know, when, when, when we didn't have anything, we had God. Okay. And when you pray to God, things happen. Right. And right. a lot of us are living off the prayers of our ancestors, of okay. our grandparents, and that right. creates for us to be creative, talented, athletic, mm -hmm. mind-wise. Uh, just about uh, everyone cannot play piano. You have to be ambidextrous. 
<laughs> yes, sir. Everyone cannot be uh, virtuosos, but everyone can get a, a working knowledge of it. Okay. And as, like I said, with the advent of the new computer music, once you get your working knowledge of it, that's enough to carry you on if you've got enough oomph or unction or mm -hmm. enough drive within you. And that comes not just from yourself, that comes from your parents. Before we end the program, though, you mentioned you're a founder of Pump Hard uh, Productions. Where did Pump Hard come from? <laughs> my wife likes, a, my wife says it sounds like a, we're not even going to get into that, but she <laughs> says it uh, sounds like one of them funny sites or whatever you call them, <laughs> porn sites, yeah. Uh -huh. But the name itself came from my younger brother. Uh, and he, he's, he's real creative like that. Okay. And he gave me the name. Hey, man, you pumping out some music. You, you ought to call yourself Pump Hard. It's amazing. Yes. Amazing. amazing. So yeah. I use that for my studio endeavors. Uh, I, I record whatever type of music people that come in, they ask me to record. Now, if I have my own personal, you know, thing that I want to do, it's going to be gospel or inspirational music. In public, that's all I'll go out and play. But in the studio, I can play... Uh, I've taken lessons in several types of music. My favorite is country and western. But, okay. you know, I do the rap thing, I do pop music, whatever they want at Pump Power Productions. And that's a subsidiary of Beach Park Productions. And that was founded by a man named Harold Gibson. And I really want to give him some credit because mm -hmm. Harold, he was very instrumental in Pump Power Productions becoming what they are today. Uh, that, uh, years ago, there was a African American that was number one in the in the in the in the country. Yes, sir. Country Western. I forget, I forget his name. Pride. Ja Charlie Pride. Charlie Pride. Yeah, right, yes, right, right, right. Yes, okay, sir. Um, we we want to. You you involved in youth mentor, mentoring and um, music and music training programs locally. Yes, sir. How do people get in contact with you? You can reach me at. 224, and I don't mind giving you my cell phone number because I want the young people to have a chance. Okay. I'm accessible. 224-441-4539. Or you can email me at pumpheartproductions1 at yahoo.com or you can visit my website and get that information also. And that website is pumpheartproductions.com. Once again, that's pumpheartproductions.com. Well, I want to thank you very much. Uh, Minister David, David Jones, Jones uh, for taking time for your busy schedule and also uh, your young music students to come out and let Lake County know, because Lake County should know that there are people interested in mentoring young people, you know, to uh, make a difference yes, here in Lake County and probably for in, in their lives, you know. So I want to thank you for coming out and bringing uh, Brian Bennett, uh, performed on guitar, uh, Isaac McCoy, piano, and Don McCauley, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yes. Also on Clayton piano. Jones. And, um, Clayton Jones. Clayton Jones. Uh, so the other young man that, uh, in his in 60s. The 60s. 60s that, uh, so there's an opportunity for others that are, that are in, uh, uh, that want to learn the, and get involved in the music field. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you've enjoyed the program. Uh, this has been Community Forum, and you can find us on uh, online, drbrooks.tv. This has been Community Forum. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host.